Hello everyone and welcome back to APM Help Academy. In today's video, we're going to go over reports and how to share reports with interested parties. The most common way that you'll be able to share a report on a monthly cadence with an owner is by simply going to your respective owner. So in this case, we will go to Smell. Scroll down to the section that says Owner Packets or Owner Packet. Click Edit. And then make sure you add included reports that are requested by this owner. In the event that the owner doesn't want it to be a part of their owner packet, you can simply go to reports, go to a specific report, search for your interested party, and then from the actions, Click email, select the recipient, and then type in your email body, any notes or descriptions that you need, and then hit send. If there is a report that your owner likes that they do not desire to have as their owner packet, you can go ahead and do a couple things. First thing you will want to do is select the report that your owner desires. Select the time frame that they desire it to be. Search by name, hit update. You'll then go to actions, save layout, retitle it to what, what you need to remember the report. And then hit save. If you select this option to lock this the report to the saved dates, you will not be able to use this template aside from the, the saved point. So I would recommend in the event that someone wants it to be sent on a weekly basis, do not lock it to the save report dates as it will then auto populate to whatever the, the most current period is. So we'll hit save. We now have our report. And now with our saved report, you can set a scheduled report. So in this one, end of year cash flow. Save report. You can select your format, whether it be a CSV, Excel, or PDF. You can select the recipients. You can BCC anyone on your team. Type a message for the email. And select your start date at which this is going to be sent out. In the event that the owner has a report that they desire to be sent on a frequent basis, but they do not desire to be part of their owner packet, you can do the following to appease them. You'll select the report that they desire. You'll from the report page, click actions, save layout. Create a save name for it so you can easily access the report. I would then recommend do not lock the report to the save dates because otherwise if you lock it, it'll be whatever date you first created the report and they will no longer get updated reports. So I would recommend keeping it as the following. Hit save. Then what you can do is you can now with your saved report, set up a scheduled report. So from reporting, you'll select the item that says scheduled reports. You'll say new scheduled report, scheduled name. You can name it again, whatever you desire the owner to see. Select your save report. Select the format you wish it to be shared with your recipient. So you can do PDF, CSV, or Excel. Select your recipient. BCC any team members within your app folio that need to be on it. Create the subject, type anything in the message to the owner, select the start date and the frequency. Then you will hit save. And now the system will send out a weekly report to Smaug on a weekly cadence. 
If in the event that you need to delete a scheduled report, you'll find your setup already scheduled reports here. Select the item and then select the task on the right hand side, delete scheduled report. Another useful section on the reports section for property managers is going to be the transaction reports. This one's very, very useful when wanting to track what breakdown of an ACH payment, what checks were a part of it. A lot of the times when troubleshooting these ACH transfers or payments from at Folio, it does not give you the option on your reconciliation to select the full dollar amount. So the report you will want to cling to and rely on will be the check register detail enhanced. On the check register detailed enhanced, just like the bank account association and a couple other reports we've looked at already, you can do a couple of filtering. I would recommend running it for all properties, running it as of the date of your most recent ACH batch that you want to troubleshoot. Select the bank account the ACH batch is on. And then for payment type, instead of saying all, select ACH payments only. Then you'll hit update. In our demo, we don't have any ACH payments but it will show you when you run this report the full ACH batch, the batch number and confirmation, and then sublines showing each individual check that was a part of that batch. This will be useful when troubleshooting of determining whether or not a vendor was paid twice or if there was some type of duplicate payment to someone for multiple bills. Another useful report for property managers when troubleshooting weird transactions will be your journal entry register. For this, you would just customize it and run it for the snapshot of how long that journal entry may have been there. Another report that is helpful besides the check register detail when troubleshooting ACH batches will also be the deposit register. This one, unlike payments, will be only for deposits if you want to see a breakdown or a summary of what the net as ACH payment on your bank account consisted of. Like the check register detailed, when we hit update, it'll show the deposit, the reference of the deposit, and then show a breakdown here on the right column of the brick of start. <clears throat> On the deposit register, you'll be able to update it to show the date range you desire, what bank account you want to troubleshoot for, and then you'll hit update. Then in the deposit amount, you will see what actually cleared at your bank, whether or not it was an ACH. And then in the column to the right of it, you'll have the itemized breakdown of what makes up that full deposit. This is a useful one wanting to track more so what consisted of your ACH deposit to make sure tenants are paying on time. Another transaction report that is very helpful for property managers is going to be the bill detail report. This is very, very important to keep track of what bills have been paid and which are not paid. So on this page here, again, you can select to run for all properties. You can search by a specific payee. You can check if the bills have already been paid and select the payment type, which user created them what GL account the bills are impacting. The bill date, when it was paid, when it's due, when it was created or when it was last edited and the bill status, which will be the most important. Typically you want to run this for the unpaid, but you can also run it for the paid as well. We then can hit update. Then if there was a bill created and unpaid to our 75 520 HVAC repairs, we would see it here. It will also link or let you know if it is a part of a current ongoing work order. Last but certainly not least in the transaction reports is the unpaid balances by month. This is a useful report for you to track your tenants and see what balances they have not yet paid. I would advise running it for all, or you can customize it to run it for just current, future, and notice tenants, which more than likely will have payments due. You can also run it for specific GL accounts. You can say rent, pet rent, tenant HUD, 
any other rental charges the tenant will have. You can select the pay period. You can do it for the month or for the whole year. You can hit update. To which if there's any of these charges that are unpaid, you will then be able to contact your tenants and make sure that they're making payments. This has been transaction reports and how to share reports with interested parties. If you like the content, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe. Or if you have more questions, you can reach us at info at apmhelp.com.